الحمد لله رب العالمين هو لا نجام المسلمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد محمد عبده ورسوله سلام عليكم Do we have? Is everybody here? Everybody's here, huh? If you're not here, raise your hand. Okay, one from Egypt, two from Egypt. Saidi. <laughs> you? They're still coming in the door, Masallah. The tickets are free, right? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Do we have any Muslims with us today? Everybody's Muslim, raise your hand. Huh? Oh. Anybody that's not Muslim yet, raise your hand. Huh? One, two, three. How can I be surrounded by all these terrorists? How can I make Muslim? I let that slip. I've been reading the newspaper too much. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I don't this bird up here. I, I looked at it and said, what, what are you trying to tell me? With a bird, and Yusuf is for the bird, so what? By the way, my name is Yusuf. Can you say Yusuf? Yusuf. Huh. You get it right the first time. All these years, my wife still says Yusuf. <laughs> special and beautiful subject tonight. And I feel very happy, very honored that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, would let me be the one to talk about this favorite topic of mine. And this topic is Isa ibn Maryam. Now for the Muslims, we knew exactly what that meant. But somebody who doesn't know the Arabic language, they might say, what did he say? What is that? We translate that to say, Jesus, the Son of Mary, peace be upon you. I wanted to mention before we got started a couple of things in the etymology of words. We're saying what we do we mean by these words. And the first word that we want to talk about tonight is Isa. And, and how come you say Isa? What, what, who is Isa? Why don't you just say Jesus like normal people? Actually, if you read from the Old Testament, the book or the Torah of the Yahudi, the Jewish, you will find that the person that's mentioned there is named, they have one, they say, Esau, Esau. And this person is not the Jesus that we know today, but we find that this word was used long, long, long ago. One of the descendants from Abraham. And by the way, while we're on the subject of names, we don't say Abraham. His name is Ibrahim. And you should learn that because Jewish, they don't eat ham. So they like... <laughs> I told you, they laugh at anything. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. We have a very good crowd with us tonight, mashallah. And this subject of Jesus, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, is a very special one to me because for many years, almost 50 years, I was a Christian. And Christians, they love Jesus. After all, that's what Christian means. This is somebody who follows Christ. But guess what? That's another word. But we have to understand where does it mean, where did it come from? Christ comes from Christos. Christos is not Arabic. It's not Hebrew. It's not Aramaic. It's Greek. This is a Greek word, Christos. And it got shortened to Christ. And then it became pronounced Christ. So basically what we're learning is when we take things to English, we mispronounce them pretty bad. So it's nice to know how to go back to the original language and get a feel of what it was like 2,000 years ago for Jesus and even all the way back 5, 6, 10,000 years ago for Musa. Who's Musa? 
Huh? Can you guess? Musa must be Moses. Yeah. See? And Ibrahim. And how about this one? Nuh. Who's Nuh? Noah. Noah. Yeah. How about Yaqub? Jacob. That's good. How about Ayub? You can't guess. I, I could never have guessed that. If somebody didn't tell me, I wouldn't know. Ayub. Who's Ayub? Is that Jacob also? No, no. Job. Job? If it's Job, it needs to have an E on the end or two O's. It must be Job. And we all need a job, you know. <laughs> Especially these days. <laughs> Job was Ayub. Actually, he was a very, very special messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a prophet of God, because he had a character about him that if you know any Buddhists and you'd like to help them know about Islam, they say so many good things about Buddha. One of the things they told me is that Buddha gave his own arm so that a lion could eat it. Said the lion has to have something to eat too, so just give him my arm, you know. We don't know if it's a true story because obviously they don't authenticate what they do like we do with Hadith. But what we do know is for sure that Prophet Muhammad told us about this person, Job. And what he said about Ayub, that he was so really humble in front of Allah. In many, many ways. We didn't really even meet somebody like this. He was very, very humble. And when he was afflicted with his disease and everything, so suffering so much, he had what we call maggot in his, on his arm, you know, some disease, and this life form called maggot living there. It fell off onto the ground, and he picked it up, and he put it back, and they said, what is this? He said, all of the creatures, and even this thing, have their risk, their daily bread is what's, what's written for them and he put him back so he could live I think that the more we know about all of the prophets it helps us to understand something in Islam outside when you were coming through this door you noticed just over here to my left as you go out there are stories of some of the prophets just a little taste to let you understand you might start out saying okay I know who's Noah, and I know who's Abraham, and wait a minute, why do you call him the second father of humanity? Uh, and why Abraham, you're saying he's the friend of Allah? Why Moses, you said he's the uh, king of Allah? What, what is, okay, take some time and understand that these are great people to us. I noticed that somebody put on there, they are ordinary people. I, I know they were trying to say that they weren't gods, and that's fine, but they're not ordinary people. Because ordinary people like us, <laughs> we make a lot of bad mistakes. Our prophets, our prophets didn't make these major mistakes. They didn't do what some people say they did. Because all the prophets, to us, as Muslims, they're very high. They're very, very, very high. We put them above our own head because we, not just because we love them, we honor them, we revere them, and we follow them. And how could we follow somebody who's doing bad things? So a prophet, somebody who's coming to give us a message from Almighty God, he has to have outstanding character. His character has to be above reproach so that the people following him would not make the same kinds of mistakes. Now, you might say, well, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. As soon as you do, I'm going to ask you, which Bible? There are many. And one of them may say something, and another one maybe doesn't say that. Because not all of them are the same. For us, we don't have two different opinions. Any question you have about Islam, especially when you're here at this center, you need to know these two things. In Islam, we have to tell the truth, or else we can go to hell forever. Muslims will never knowingly lie about anything to do with Islam. Never. And the second thing is the proof. Even if we made a mistake, and it could happen, you can verify it because everything in Islam is clear. It's right in front of you. 
What do you want to know about Islam? It's there. We have only one Quran, not two versions, not three, not four, not five. It's Quran and it's only Quran in the Bhagavad Arabiya, in the Arabic language. The same holds true for the Hadith. We know the Prophet he said, and this is Sahih Bukhari, chapter one, called Kitab al Iman, in the Sahih of his collection, and it says on the authority of Omar, radiallahu anhu, that every single action will be according to the intention. Now, there's not two versions of this. And if you ask any Muslim, what's the first hadith? They can tell you this. And if you ask him, even you start the hadith, he can finish it for you. The same is true of the Quran. Somebody starts to recite something, and he stops. Maybe the Imam forgets something, or he's hesitating. There will be somebody in the crowd, in the jama'ah, who will help him. If he was to say, for instance, A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-yazim, Bismillahi al-Rahman al-Rahim, Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Allahu Samad. Lam. Wa lam. Wa lam. Now see, all I said was lam, wasn't it? Wa lam, wa lam. But they know the rest of it. Because this is how it works in Islam. So for those who don't know, and you never had a chance to be around Muslims to find out, there is not two versions. It's one. And you can check it out. To us, these prophets, all of them, are far above us. But they're not God. They are human beings just like us. They're born. They eat food. They drink, not alcohol, and they go to the bathroom, and they get old, and they die. For us, as Muslims, with our description of Almighty Allah, they couldn't be Allah. None of them could be Allah. Abraham could not be Allah. And anybody who is Jewish would say, yeah, that's right. And Moses couldn't be Allah. And they would say, yeah, that makes sense. How could Moses be Allah? And if you said, well, what about Jesus? No, no, he could be God. What? Why would you say that? Because he's the Christ. Ah, now we came back to the word that I was talking about. He's the Christ. Don't you believe he's the Christ? Yes, we do. Well, there you are. There's your proof. Why? Do you think Christ means God? If it did, then Christians would all be gods. Yeah? Well, you got the same name, must be gods too. Yeah? No. Likewise, you just think for a minute. When you say this word, you don't know what it is. Maybe somebody will tell you it's Messiah. Oh, you believe he's the Messiah. The Messiah is predicted in the Old Testament. Did you know that the word Christos is the translation of the word Messiah. This is the word. Just another language. If I said bait, huh? from Arabic, bait, I'm not talking about the English word, you know, to catch fish. I'm talking about bait, a house. In English, it's house. You didn't change any. We were talking about the words. So somebody, one of the preachers that I used to know, they used to say a lot of stuff. One of them said, Jesus is the Logos. And the people were like, really? Yes, it says in the Bible, he's the Logos. Wow, that sounds pretty powerful, doesn't it? Logos. Anybody know what's Logos? Huh? You didn't know? Okay. You know the image on the outside of the building? That blue thing? That's called the Logo. You got one up here? Yeah. That's a logo. This is the blue image of this building that we're in, isn't it? Or is that a person making salat? Maybe. I don't know. I'm just looking at This is called a logo. Why? Do you know it's called a logo? From the same word, from Greek. It means word. That's all it means. So this represents...